Hi, my name is Leroy Herring. We invite you again today to another episode of Emmaus Road Podcast brought to you by Crossway Ministries. We invite you to join us each week as we bring you a short uh, Bible teaching uh, pertaining to various subjects that uh, we think <clears throat> would be beneficial to a large group of people. Uh, as we talk about these subjects, we ask that you follow us along uh, with your Bible, take notes, go back and check them out for yourself and see whether or not you agree with us in the positions that we take on various subjects. <clears throat> We're continuing to look at various uh, traditions in the church and how they have developed over the centuries and not only traditions in the church, traditions in denominationalism, uh, traditions <clears throat> that may or may not theologically line up exactly with the Word of God. In speaking with people and witnessing to people, teaching Sunday school and so on, I don't know how many times I have heard over the years and decades of my life, when you bring up the subject of salvation to an individual to talk to them uh, about it, one of the most common and one of the first answers you receive a lot of times is, <clears throat> well, I was baptized when I was eight years old. I was baptized when I was 12 years old. Or they will say, oh yes, I've been baptized. And I realize that we associate water baptism with salvation but when we come up with that answer, <clears throat> we are placing emphasis on a religious ceremony that we do instead of the blood of Jesus. Now, we may think different, and we just use that as a testimony to our salvation. But what we first pronounce in just about all cases, is truly what we believe. And most of the time, it signifies to the individual the means and method by which they were saved. It's just the fact that our human nature wants to own part of our salvation. We want to be a part of it and feel like we have some ownership in it without just resting in the gift that God gave us. Paul probably made the most complete statement or his most complete statement that he made pertaining to salvation is probably in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. <clears throat> He says, now, brothers and sisters, let me remind you of the good news which I preached to you pertaining to salvation, which you welcome and accepted, and on which you stand. By this faith you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. Verse 3 says, for I passed on to you as a first important what I also received, so he's given to them and to us today what he received. Verse 3, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Verse 4, and that he was buried and that he was bodily raised on the third day according to the scriptures. That is what we believe. That is the essence of salvation. That what he did 
on the cross was completely sufficient. It is finished. When we add anything to his finished work, to his grace, again, <clears throat> we are essentially slapping God in the face and saying, man, I wish you'd finish this thing where I wouldn't have, I don't have to do this. Why didn't you just go ahead and take care of all of it? He did. He took care of everything that we need. One statement that if you get nothing else out of any of the podcasts that you you may watch from uh, Emmaus Road, remember this statement. Everything that God requires of his creation, everything that God requires the blood supplied. It's as simple as that, child of God. Everything that God requires, His blood has supplied. You can't get outside or away from or add to what His blood has already supplied to us, for us, whether it's sanctification, justification, salvation, illumination, understanding, the gifts. The Holy Spirit operates through His blood because the Holy Spirit did not come and reside within us until Jesus went shed His blood on the cross. So the Holy Spirit only operates through the blood of Christ. But anything and Everything that God requires of his creation, the blood has supplied. We don't add anything to it except a thankful heart. If you read in Hebrews 9.22, in fact, under the law, almost everything is cleansed with blood and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. So when I think that I have to confess with my mouth, then I'm saying my mouth has the same power as the shedding of Christ's blood. I'm putting what I do, I'm putting a works in the same category as the shedding of Christ's blood because I am adding to what the blood has already provided for me. The blood provided atonement for all sin, past, present, future, all sin. If we attempt to add anything to that, then we are saying, that what you did on the cross was not sufficient and I have to complete the work you start. And you can see how foolish of a statement that really is when we just stop and just use a little common sense. Well, that's the most foolish thing I've ever heard. But yet that is practiced daily, weekly, by millions and millions of believers. If you look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of His own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. N Again, not because of anything we have done, but for his own purpose of grace. Grace was established before the foundation of the universe. Jesus, according to Peter and, and the rest of the word of God, 
Jesus went to the cross before the foundation of the universe. That was his first act. That's how he could have relationship with Adam and Eve when they sinned. He could come on the scene and and talk to a sinner because the blood had already been shed that covered Adam's sin. If you look at Romans chapter 11 verse 6, it says, But if it is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. So I can either look at my salvation and say it is all of God or it is God and me. We get together, we, we do a pretty good job at salvation. Or is it just all of him of what he has done for me? Why do we even think that an unregenerate individual could do anything that a divine God could accept? as far as the basis of works for salvation. We are an unregenerate individual. We are under the curse. And to think that we can help remove that curse from our life (coughs) when it is only by the blood of Jesus by what Jesus did. 